Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over names versus IDs in the Nexion IDE or in the Nexion displays themselves. And then I'm going to go over how you can loop through the series of components on the screen for to minimize your code. What I have is I've added a series of radio buttons and a set of numbers. Or number fields and I have them numbered in a certain way and I'll get into that in a minute but if I click on the radio button the R0 you can see over here that the ID is 1 and if I go to radio button 1 the ID is 2 and when I get all the way down here to radio button 15 the ID is 16 so in other words the radio buttons the IDs go from 1 to 16 and then what's different about the IDs versus the names when I get to the number fields over here, which I start with N2 and then go down to N3, N4, N5, you'll notice that the ID is now over here is 25. So the ID has to be unique to every component that's on the page. And I have these separated for a reason. And what I did, I'll expand this. So what I did was I added the radio buttons, and then I added these buttons. And you can see this got an ID of 17. This one got 18. The H0 got 20. And these each got IDs also. And then when I got 24, I went back over to the number field and got 25. Now since I'm going to be scanning these radio buttons and the number fields, I added them all at one time so that the, they would be in sequence. So the IDs would be 1 through 16 for the radio, and for the number field it would be 25 to 40. And so that way I can associate and loop through them in order. And that'll make more sense as we get a little bit further. I also want to show the version of the editor I'm using. Since this video has come out and since I've been making this video, I've got to notice that there's an upgrade to the editor. But I didn't want to do that midway through this test because sometimes the editor has, or sometimes the upgrades do um, different things. And so I wanted to finish this first. And then what I'll probably do is redo this or upgrade it and try and see how it holds. The other thing that I'm doing with these videos is I'm going to do a, a, a write-up over on CheapControls.com that's going to go into a little bit more depth. I'm going to try to keep the videos a little shorter and go into more detail over on the website. So I'll follow this up with this video with, with the write-up over on CheapControls.com and then I'll, I'll let you know what happened when I upgraded the editor. And I'm going to go over the code. The radio buttons and the number fields aren't going to do anything as far as code-wise. I'm going to do it all over on this side over here. And so the up button is going to have something happen on the release. And I'm going to use the system value, sys0, which you can see over here on this program page. You can see sys0, sys1, and sys2. And you can add your own in here, but these come default set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set sys0 equal to 1, which is the ID of the first radio button. And then I'm going to count up to 16. So I'm going to go 1 through 16. And while sys0 is less than 17, I want to execute the code that's within these curly braces here. When I press the up button, I'm going to want the number fields to increment if the radio button is selected. But I don't want the number fields to go above 100. So if the value is less than 100 in the number field and the radio button is selected, I'm going to increment it. And then finally, I'm going to increment the sys0 button so that the next time through it, it's 2. But how you access it using the ID is you use this array, and it's called the B array, or the component array. And what you do is you have the B and then inside the brackets, you put the ID that you want to access. And then after that, it's just like using the name. So B sys0, which would be 1.val, is like writing R0.val. So if R0.val or B1.val is equal to 1, then we know that the radio button is on. And then we can just do some math for the next step. So if B 
and then the brackets this is 0 plus 24 because we know we're 25 40 if the value is less than 100 because b says 0 25 or b bracket 25 is equal to n2 if that's less than 100 we're going to increment it and in this way as we as we increment sys 0 we're going to work our way through the radio buttons and the number fields now if i switch down to down down is identical other than the fact that we don't want to go below 0 so we're going to step through it again we're going to do that b bracket 1 through b bracket 16 and if they're if the radio buttons are set then we're going to decrement the value in n1 I'm going to show you this now in debug. So if I hit the up button, nothing will happen. But if I select a couple radio buttons and then hit the up button, you can see the ones that I have selected go up or go down. And you can see they're independent. So if I select one later and go up, it increments from wherever it was. And you can see this is a lot more efficient than, than selecting every single button and incrementing them based upon the radio button. You just do it in one loop. Now for the reset, I'm going to set the values of all the end buttons equal to 50. But once again, we're only going to do it if this B sys 0, which is the radio buttons, are set to 1. So we assign our sys 0 value to 1. We're going to increment it 1 through 16. We're going to check the radio buttons. If it's true, then we're going to set the value to 50. And we have to add that 24. And on the HO, I, I add the slider. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same things. Step through each one. Check the value if it's equal to 1, the radio button. And if it is, then we're just going to set it equal to the value of the slider. If you notice, I'll do this on release, and I do it on touch move. So that way it adjusts as I'm moving it, and then wherever I release it, it stays there. I'm going to show you this one more time. We'll select three. We'll reset them. See, they go to 50. And I'll select this one. Now, this is going to be the same on all of them because it's going to set all four of these to the value. So you can see that it set the value. Now down here, I decided that I wanted to get the total, so the addition of all these, but I'm doing all of them. So I'm going to add every radio button and then the average. So I'll take whatever this total is and I'll divide it by 16. I'm going to do that based upon a timer. So down in this corner, I've added timer 0. And you can see I have it set just like its standard is. It's set to 400 milliseconds. So every 400 milliseconds, it's going to update whatever it is we want to update. Now I'll show you the code. Now in this case, this is always going to be running in the background, so I don't want there to be confusion with sys0. So I'm going to use sys1 as my variable. I'm going to set it equal to 25. But we don't need to worry about the radio buttons because we're going to get the total of all of them and then the average of all of them. So we're going to set n0, which is this field down here. We're going to set it equal to 0. So we're going to start with a zero. And then as we loop through it from 25 to 40, we're just going to continually add the value of each number field to this field. So we're going to make n0 plus equal, whatever it is, the value of the next number field as we cycle through it. And then we'll increment that sys1. And then when we're all done, we're going to take n1 down here, and we're going to make it equal to n0 divided by 16. Now, since they can't do floating points in here, you could divide it by, you could multiply n1 times 100 and then divide it by 16 and then use one of those fake floats with a decimal point to get a little more accuracy if you wanted. But for this example, we're just going to divide it by 16. But the main point of this is to show you that with only a few lines of code, you're able to cycle through all of the fields. Now this will make a little more sense down here as I click. I'm just going to click 1, and we're going to reset it. So it's 50, and 50 divided by 16 is about 3. Now I'm going to select them all.
and I've reset them. The total is 800. 800 divided by 16 is 50. Now if I click this, the average should always stay about the same. But you'll notice that this goes a little bit slower than the screen than these values over here because this has happened instantly and this is happening on a timer. This was a question by a subscriber and I thought this would be a, a simpler one to do but informative. I'm currently redoing the Cheap Controls website so if anyone has any feedback on that I'd sure like to hear that and I've added a new mic and I'm going to do the videos a little bit shorter so if you have any feedback on that I'd like to hear about that too. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.